Hello, Grazza and Gets. Welcome back to Happy Crumping War Gaming. Guys, most people know me as a Xenos player, but I am also a fervent Imperial player. And as of late, I've been playing a lot of Chaos as well. It is kind of wild just how many awesome armies exist in 40k. So what I thought I'd do is I'm going to give a full list of all of the Imperial armies today. I'll do another one with Xenos, another one with Chaos. And we're going to talk about why they're freaking awesome. And then I'm going to talk about how they actually play on the tabletop as well. So if you are looking for a new army, if you're looking to start your first army, or if you're just looking to be like, am I actually on the correct army? Well, check this freaking video out because I'm going to talk about what makes them so unique and awesome. And I'm also going to be talking about how they play on the battlefield so that you can make decisions about whether or not you want to give these tries, these guys a try. Speaking of which, if you want to give these guys a try, a great way to do it if you don't want to have to buy them first would be TTS. I regularly run TTS uh, leagues uh, through the Discord. You do have to be a paying member to participate because it is a lot of work for me to organize these. And uh, I require you to be you to buy me my beer per month if you're going to participate <laughs> in that. So you would have to become a member, but it's an awesome Discord with an amazing community of people. So anyway, let's get right into the video. We'll start with the Adeptus Astartes. These are the genetically engineered super warriors of the Imperium. Space Marines are badass because they fulfill basically every single sci-fi dream that we all have. We all know, like, oh, well, in our own lives, unfortunately, we're never going to become a genetically engineered super filter. It's not. But somewhere through the use of science, perhaps I one day could be 10 feet fall tall, and I could bench press 2,000 tons. It's possible with scientific engineering. Well, the Space Marine is your fantasy. This guy is awesome. They are rock stars. They can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with massive aliens. They can do basically anything. And they play similar to that on the tabletop themselves. The army itself is extremely flexible. They can adapt to an extraordinary amount of different armies and scenarios on the tabletop. And this is something that a lot of other armies can't do. Other armies might have a game plan they have to stick to, whereas the Space Marines have the ability to flexibly change where they need to. They truly are tactical masters. They also have extremely high burst potential. So one of their so their main army rule, Oath of Moment, what it does is it will, will allow them to choose any enemy unit on the tabletop and allow your entire army just to get full rerolls to hit against it. This will allow you to pretty much always designate the unit that you need to die, which can be extremely strong on the tabletop. Another huge benefit of running as Space Marines is that you will always have a competitive build. Because of balance status slates and balance patches, occasionally some armies have to more or less sit on the sidelines for three months or so because sometimes GW might overdo the balance a little bit and make them just a little bit unplayable for a little while, at least in a competitive sense. 10th um, edition has been great where like competitively some armies might be getting a little too much nerfed occasionally, but no army is ever truly unplayable if you're playing this as a hobby. So Space Marines, however, will always have a way to play at a high level because they just have so many flexible options. Your Divergent Chapters tend to be stronger, and maybe we'll do a video specifically on the merits of the individual uh, Divergent Chapters. Those would be the Dark Angels, the Blood Angels, the uh, Space Wolves, maybe your Black Templars. Um, then we'll look at the massive data sheet roster. So there, this goes into just how flexible they are. They have so many freaking different styles of units that you will not get bored playing them because there's always a different way to play them. Um, we'll always be able to respond to the meta. We already kind of covered that. And there is a high skill expression that's generally available. So some armies... Some armies, you just make the correct army. You, you, you take the correct army list, and that's, that's what the army does, and there, there's no need to get into higher-level tactics. Space Marines, your better players, will always be able to perform at a much higher level simply because they have this type of unit that will really allow you to express your skill on the tabletop. So that is a really cool thing. Adeptus Astartes, your Space Marines, there we have it. Let's go to the next one. We're talking about the Adeptus Sororitas, or the Sisters of Battle. Now, these chicks are freaking awesome awesome one of the ways that they actually empower themselves is their fervent belief i would say heretical belief just saying it's more accurate they are heretics the emperor of mankind tells you that he is not a deity and they worship him as such yes all sisters players are heretics anyway <laughs> their fervent belief in him allows them to channel the warp because they're all witches just saying and they get to remove randomness from the game this is a really unique scenario that only one other army in the game actually has access to so what they get to do is 
they get to guarantee certain rolls. So at the start of every single turn, they're going to get a certain amount of miracle dice. And what this is, is a predefined dice roll that they get to use in the game whenever they so choose. So let's say that you're about to shoot them with a Tyrann effect. And you have this huge anti-tank uh, gun that's going into the Rhino. And you know the Rhino or the Immolator or whatever transport the sisters have is about to get blown up. You can just take a six from your miracle bank and of dice and just go, nope, I didn't blow up because I'm going to make it this save on my invulnerable save. This is so powerful. It also allows uh, Sisters of Battle to do other really cool things, such as, hey, I really desperately need to make this 9-inch Deep Strike charge. Let me take a 6. I'll put it down, and then suddenly, boom. Uh, you can just more or less make it so that the charge is a very easy to roll charge. They're also extremely fast, depending on which detachment you take. But there's also multiple detachments, and many of them encourage speed. So whether you're playing Pendant Host or you're playing Bringers of Flame, you also you actually have ways to get extremely quick across the board. They are relatively elite, meaning they don't have the most amount of units, although they do have certain uh, combinations which can dramatically increase the amount of units. So for example, they have a, 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 a unit called an Immolator, which is a tank that will allow you to split some of your units up. So let's say you make your army list and you only have 13 units and you're a little concerned that that's not going to be quite enough to actually get all your secondaries and stuff. Well, the Immolator will allow you to split your units. Uh, so say you have a big Sisters of Battle unit. Well, suddenly now you have two five mans instead of one 10 man or 10 woman, uh, which can really be very flexible and allow you to help score your secondaries quite a bit. They also have overwhelming medium fire range power. Uh, so or firepower, medium range firepower. Oh, geez, that took me a while to say. So they have every single multi-melta in the game. And when you stack the multi-melta with the ability to say when on your damage roll, just take a six on the dice and put it down. Oh boy, does that get spicy. Um, all their vehicles come with an innate invulnerable save of a six up. I think it might actually be all of their units have a six up invulnerable save, which really stacks well with the ability to grab a six and just say, nope, you didn't kill me. Very good. Now, their infantry bodies are all very, very squishy and generally very easy to kill, which is a bit of a problem. And it does mean that they have to be very cautious on the way they position across the board. But guys, trust me, these chicks punch hard. And if you like punching hard, probably going to enjoy the Sisters of Battle. Let's get into the next one. We have the Adeptus Custodes. Now, I am an Adeptus Custode fan. As a matter of fact, I am slowly trying to transform myself into an Adeptus Custode. I'm, work I'm working on those biceps, guys. I'm working on them. I'm trying to make it happen. So here's the deal. The Adeptus Custodes are to Space Marines what your Space Marines are to your generic humans. They are the super soldiers of the super soldiers. And that's really what originally drew me in because these guys are freaking bad asses. There's lore behind where you get three of them, just three Adeptus Custodes, are holding back 10,000 different Tyranids, which are these little evil psychic space bugs. And it is just super, super awesome, uh, the lore behind how freaking powerful these guys are. Now, in the tabletop, that power is really kind of reflected. But remember, uh, there's not many of them. They are what we call an extremely elite army. Uh, whereas another army for their battle line units might take 10 troops in a unit, well, a Custodes battle line unit might cost twice as much and only have four models in that unit. So they are extremely elite. This makes them very, very susceptible to elite anti-infantry shooting. Meaning if you have a Exocrine or a Castigator or any of these other types of shooting that has the flat damage three shooting, every single time a Custode fails a battle, an armor save, you lose a significant point of your army. So significant, in fact... That if you're running all infantry, each individual model that dies could be 2.5% of your entire army, which is a little crazy to say. Now, thankfully, the Custodes are very, very tough. And they all have a base 2-up armor save, which is the best armor save you can get in the game. They all have a 4-up invulnerable save, which is effectively the best invulnerable save you can get in the game. There are one or two models around that might actually have a 3-up somewhere. But it's very, very far and few in between. They actually have other ways to boost that, boost that toughness on certain models and then when you think about just how hard their normal troops just punch it's kind of crazy i do this because they, they have these massive spears the guardian spears they go bah, 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 and it's pretty damn sick so their basic troops hit harder than most armies shock troops which is really freaking fun they are a relatively slow army because they're very very infantry based with very limited access to the advance and charge now there are some ways around this they have a unit called the venatari which are super super exciting and very very fast 
Um, but they are effectively operated as a medium to short range army, even though they do have very limited long range options. Some people love the long range options. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but I do understand their purpose. The biggest drawback to these guys, in my opinion, is they suffer horribly from whiffs, meaning if they don't accomplish what they are supposed to accomplish, it can be devastating. And that's because the individual models are so reliable because their stat line is just so good that when they don't accomplish what they need to accomplish, uh, it's really hard to recover uh, simply because you don't have other arm, other units to back them up. So that is a big problem with them. And uh, that's the Eurodeptus Custodes. So let's jump into the next one. We have the Imperial Knights. Now, for everyone who watched Gundam Wing as a child, I watched a lot of Gundam Wing. This is your dream. Uh, this is the extreme of the elite. You can have armies that have six models when you're playing the Imperial Knights. Five army, five models when you run the Imperial Knights. You have really big knights. You have little baby knights. And uh, th these guys are just these massive, massive robotic constructions that are going to smash the foes of the Imperium. Actually, your big knights, which we would call the um, Paladin class or the Errant class or whatever, these guys come from royal houses in the lore of 40k. And they are going to be facing the Imperium's foes with honor and duty. So these guys suffer from model count in a severe way. Like I said, you can actually build an Imperial Knights army that is only five models, which is just crazy. Now, each one of the models can have a very, very high level of power, which gives them a lot of times very great primary control because every single model will have a minimum of an OC characteristic of eight, and some of them will have OC characteristics of 10, which can make them really, really good at holding and denying your opponent's primary. It makes them very skilled at that. They have extremely good board control. And now, thanks to a recent update from Games Workshop, they have extremely powerful movement shenanigans, which will allow big knights to avoid typical vehicles' weaknesses. Now, which weakness am I talking about? One of the big problems with vehicle-style armies is vehicles can't move through terrain, which makes it very easy to uh, control the way they get to move. But big knights now can just walk through walls. Uh, they get what we call the Kool-Aid Man effect. Uh, there are some penalties associated with it, but they're really not that bad. Um, also, similar to the Custodes, these guys suffer horribly from whiffs. They they have so few models, the models have to perform, and that can be a problem with them. So that is the Imperial Knights, but they are huge, stompy robots, and they do cause all the destruction you're hoping big, stompy robots to do. A couple armies left. We've got the Adeptus Mechanicus. Now, this is an army I do not like to play. However, man, do they have some cool ways to play. The Adeptus Mechanicus are the tech priest of the 41st millennia. These are the guys who worship the Omnissiah as the technology god. And uh, they might have gone a little overboard with it by, you know, maybe turning themselves into robots a little bit. They're all cyborgs, and they're all kind of psychopaths. Now, however, this is similar to uh, the Adeptus Astartes in that they are a very flexible army. They can build in multiple different ways. They can have extremely mobile anti-tank shooting. They've got these uh, these chicken walkers that get, to walk, that get to walk around. I actually forget the name of them right now. Um, for the life of me, I can't remember the name of the actual unit, but they kind of look like giant chickens. And they have las cannons. They're super, super fast. They have extremely reliable shooting with all of the stratagems and all of the um, army rule support that they get. And they can be very, very fast and surprisingly tough. They also have great firing platforms from their individual tanks. And they have horde mechanics, meaning you have super cheap and very spammable infantry options. So they can run armies that just have 100 plus infantry bodies, and they can be very good at that. They've got extremely strong pregame movement shenanigans when it comes to infiltration and scout moves so that they get to uh, start the game outside of their own deployment zone, or they get to move before the game actually starts. Easy access to MSU, like I just said. You've got tons of these individual smaller units that you can run around and just do crazy scoring and shenanigans with. But you can also blast them into these death bricks. So they have great art units that might cost a lot, but pack a huge punch in the form of your breachers and things such as that. Now, one of the drawbacks to this army is that they are extremely complicated to run because synergies are a must in this army. Your, your units benefit from being close to each other, and then you have a series of stackable buffs and debuffs that can make individual units much stronger and make enemy units much weaker. So it can be very challenging to coordinate all those things, but extremely rewarding when you do it. That's the admic. Let's talk about the Grey Knights. Now, have you ever seen a Grey Knight? No one ever has who's returned to tell the tale. Now, these are kind of basically space marines, but they're a little bit different. These guys have been given the mandate to purge chaos. So these guys will pop up out of nowhere and they will eliminate any sources of heresy and then they'll disappear into the night. And they'll murder anyone who saw them do it because they don't want people to know they exist. Anyway, the Grey Knights are pretty cool. They have the best movement shenanigans 
in the entire game. Essentially, every single unit in the army has the deep strike keyword, meaning they can always teleport across the battlefield. And the current index that the, in, that the Green Knights are playing through have the ability to re-deep strike um, every single turn. So at the end of your opponent's turn, you can actually pick up three units in your army and you can re-teleport them the next game the next turn which gives them the most crazy mobility options of any army in the game not to mention they all auto advance six inches when they advance which makes them very fast as well then on top of all that they have one of the craziest stratagems in the game called the mist of deimos which means that anytime you move within nine inches of them whether it's an advance a fallback or a normal move they get to get picked back up into reserves, and then you could even rapid ingress them in the same turn. They are so unreasonably fast and tricky with their movement shenanigans. It's a huge, huge strength of the army. Now, I will say they are quite vulnerable to anti-elite infantry shooting, similar to the Custodes. And as a matter of fact, they might have a similar model count to the uh, Adeptus Custodes because they are very expensive individually. I, I mean expensive in points terms, by the way. Uh, and once again, all of the, they're also kind of similar to the Adeptus Custodes because all of their individual models, they have a base two up armor save. So they are very tough for infantry. Now, one of the problems that they do suffer from is occasionally they can have a hard time taking down big uh, enemy armor. So if it's a big tank or whatever, they can have a challenging way of taking it down. Now, they do have their own ways to get around that in the form of psychic abilities and a couple other things, but it can be a little bit of a challenge. One of the things they're amazing into is they mow through hordes. So if you're running into an army that's just playing tons and tons of infantry and throwing them at you in waves, these guys mow through it like it's no one's freaking business, and they also do great into elite anti-infantry. They also have the power to resurrect models. So one of the things that you can do with their Terminators, which are these unstoppable bulwarks of destruction, is that when they die, you can actually bring them back to life which causes big problems for the enemy, and it can give you extreme scoring potential. So they actually score points better than almost any other army in the game. That's the Grey Knights. I love them. They're freaking sick. I hope you give them a shot. Two armies left. Let's talk about the Imperial Guard. Guys, if I were to say tanks, 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 this is the army for you. The Imperial Guard is the average man's army. You're going to have a line of full-on tanks that you're going to put in front of the enemy, and you're going to blast them with a variety of devastating weapons. These guys have high amounts of units. They like quantity over quality. Uh, it doesn't hurt that they are also probably the strongest army in the game right now, just as an aside. But they have an extremely high amount of units where you can just throw chaff into your enemy to distract them while your tanks blast them into oblivion. Now, they do have extremely important synergies, similar to the way that Admech has, has uh, synergies that are really important for the army, uh, in the form of their army rule, which allows them to hand out a bunch of buffs to their individual units. That is, makes them very flexible, because those buffs can change every single turn. They're one of the few armies that has an effective use of indirect artillery fire, which can force your opponents to make the first move, which can really cause problems for a lot of people. They have a unit called the Aquilans, which... Oh my gosh, GW, please fix these things. They are real good um real good i'm not gonna go too deep into aquilans but maybe i'll do an individual video on them uh anyway aquilans also seriously guys these guys have tanks and if i mention how many freaking tanks they have and how affordable some of these tanks are these tanks are so sick this if you want to play an army that is all tanks you can do it in imperial guard and it makes some really really cool options now, it does lack melee punching power. That doesn't mean there's no melee punching power, but there, the units are far and few in between that have serious melee punching, but it really makes up for it with the extreme flexibility in its base rules of the army. So that is the Imperial Guard. Give them a whirl if you want to, and also, seriously, tanks. And lastly, we have the Imperial Agents. Now, Imperial Agents are a super cool army. Uh, I do think it's worth noting that they are probably one of the weakest armies in the game and if your aspirations are for competitiveness it's probably not the correct choice however that doesn't mean that you can't play them at a high level and uh it's just going to require some skill and maybe a little bit of luck now they are wildly msu if you don't know what msu means that stands for minimum sized units so you can just take tons and tons of msu units in this you can get 20 plus units in this ar in this army which is unreasonable am amount of units in the uh, game uh, they have assassins, which are super roided out special characters that could just do crazy things in the game. You have a very, very flexible playstyle. You having the ability to take different types of units from different types of armies. So you can take Sisters of Battle units, you can take Grey Knights units, and you can take your own unique units, which is really, really cool. Uh, they do play for points extremely well. They do happen to have a weakness in two enemy armor. 
Anyway, guys, this is every single Imperial faction out there. We've covered them all. I've covered all of their strengths, some of their weaknesses. I've given you an idea of how to run them on the tabletop. If you're curious more about it, hop into the Discord. And, and in the members-only Discord, we actually have individual channels for every single army where you guys can discuss list, des army design. You can discuss how to actually play into other armies. Lots of stuff like that. So I hope to see you in the Discord. I'm going to be doing a video like this for the Xenos and the Chaos Factions as well. If you like this stuff, hit the like, hit the subscribe, share it with your friends. It is amazing how many of you lovely people out there still are not subscribed, even though you're engaging with me every single day. And I do still appreciate you, but it would be awesome if you hit that button because it really helps uh, push the YouTube algorithm to other people. And uh, that's awesome because it's just awesome. Anyway, until next time, you guys are awesome. Have a great day.